Hello, princesses, and welcome back to Not Fit for Print Beauty with me, Rebecca. Today, we're going to take a look at a brand new product from Lisa Eldridge, a brand new lip product, which is really by far her most popular category, right? This is the Velveteen Liquid Lip color and I have purchased three shades. So let's waste no time in getting into it. I paid $27 each for the three shades that I purchased, but there are five more. So a total of eight shades and you will recognize the names. Kind of fun that Lisa Eldridge does this for us and ends up providing a liner, a gloss, at this point a lip liquid lip color, kind of lip stain, lipstick, and they kind of mix and match. I love that. I love the same shade in different formulas, and Lisa Eldridge definitely does that for us. This is a liquid lip that promises to be smudge proof, budge proof, crumble proof, cake proof. It can be worn um, kind of as a stain, um, almost in an ombre way, so you can kind of tap it onto the inside of the lips and as it goes out, it can fade and be an all day stain, or you can just put it on full force and wear it as a really powerful, bold, immovable lip color or somewhere in between. I probably fall on the in between. There is some play time and then it sets and when it sets, it does not move. Now I have been lucky enough really in a way to be so backed up with crazy new releases, namely blush this week, that I have had quite a few days to wear these and experiment with them and kind of see how they do. So I have a lot to say after we go to the demo. I have a little montage demo because those are so fun to do with lip shades. Uh, but afterwards, I really have some opinions. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is definitely a mixed bag. It depends what your priorities are in terms of a liquid lip. So I'm going to try to cover all of those bases. Uh, first of all, everybody asks me for comparisons. We're going to look at swatches in different lightings too. But when you talk about comparisons, well, you can go back to liquid lips from the beginning of time. And so far, so long ago, do you remember early liquid lips? They were like shellac and they were painful and we've definitely progressed from there. Now, the thing is, there's a psychology about a liquid lip, and forgive me if I'm repeating myself, we have new people come to this channel. Hi, new people, all the time. So let me just say this. Sometimes I feel that people jump right out of the gate and say that a liquid lip is drying, and though this may be so, and I am Mrs. Dry Lips, let me tell you, um, I also think Again, sorry to repeat myself that there is a psychological component to it. Lately, lipsticks have been so nurturing, so soft, so gentle, so balm-like that I think sometimes when we experience the texture of a liquid lip, we are quick to say that it is drying when it is actually just not a balm-like, nurturing, glossy feeling. And I believe there is a difference. Drying actually means that after it comes off, your lips are uncomfortable. The next day, your lips feel parched. Then you can say that something is drying. But just because we put it on and don't feel that smooth, slick sensation that we're getting used to, doesn't necessarily mean it's drying. It just means it's a different feel. Okay, I will put my soapbox away because some of you will say that certain liquid lips are drying and truly mean it. So I'm not trying to call anyone out. I'm just saying let's be aware that there's a difference in the feel on the lip. We have had a ton, a ton of releases lately from Fenty with their Poutsicle, which is a really good one. But we also have all of these, like Mario did this one and Merit and uh, Rare and, and Huda. And that was kind of a lip stain that goes on almost as a gloss and can either be worn like that or blotted off to reveal a stain. Um, Lisa Eldridge has much more of a traditional formula and a lot of people asked, a lot of you, because it took me a while to get to this video, so I was able to take some requests. A lot of you asked for me to compare it to an absolute favorite of mine and all of yours, which is uh, the Chanel Le Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue, which is a liquid lip on one side and a gloss on the other. Well, just the fact that this provides a gloss on the other makes it different, um, but the formula of the liquid lip is somewhat similar. I think the Chanel is a bit cushionier and the Chanel has more shades. Now Lisa has introduced eight shades, but I believe that the Lisa Eldridge brand will probably bring in some more. But other than that, yes, it's somewhat similar to this side of the Chanel uh, La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue, but I have never worn this product without the gloss 
over it. And that's what I love about this Chanel product, not to make this about Chanel, but I love the fact that you can put it on and touch up with the gloss and this remains, the stain remains untouched certainly with the gloss over it. So the Lisa Eldridge product compares in that sense. It does not compare to the slew that I mentioned from Huda and Mario and Rare and Merit where you put it on and then take it off. This is much more, the Lisa Eldridge product is much more of a kind of old fashioned original idea of a liquid lip, but made in a more comfortable, more nurturing form. But it does feel very much like a liquid lip. So I think we're gonna have a lot of people out the gate saying this is drying. I just wanna remind you of that psychological aspect. Is it, or is it just not nurturing? Okay, the three shades I got, and then we're gonna look at some swatches and two different lightings of mine. I went ahead and got Jazz. Again, we are familiar with these shades if you are a lover of Lisa Eldridge products as I am. This is the shade Rain. And this is the shade Muse. I am wearing Muse right now, actually. Uh, let's take a look at the swatches of the three shades that I got first in studio lighting. Here we go, the left of my arm is Jazz, Rain is in the middle, Muse is all the way on the right, but there are five more shades to make a total of eight. There's a very loud car going by, I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's take these outside into the warm. California sunshine. It is early in the morning here, but it is already hot out. Again, jazz on the left, rain in the middle, and muse on the right are the three shades that I picked up. Uh, and really all of them, if you like Lisa Eldridge, you will be familiar with these shades. Again, I have so much to say, like a lot, a lot to say. So I'm gonna go to the montage now with me trying on all three of these shades. So if you're considering any of these three, you can take a look, but please stick around for afterwards because I've got the good and the bad and I've had a long time to think about it. So stay right there. Okay, what color did you like the best on me? I actually think I like this one, this last one that I'm still wearing, the Muse shade. Uh, I have the good and the bad and, it, bad, and I wanted to separate it, good, bad, but they kind of interweave, and it really depends on what your priorities are from a liquid lip. If you must have that nurturing, soft, gentle feeling, then you will not like this. Whether it's psychological or not, you will put this on your lips and say it's drying. It's got a very almost traditional liquid lip feel when it dries down, okay? Once you get it on, it is gorgeous. I have never seen a liquid lip that looks this pretty. Other than, I'm not counting Chanel, you guys, because I always wear that with the gloss over. Maybe you don't, but I'm not actually counting Chanel as similar. And a lot of people ask me that. It's why I'm mentioning Chanel so much. On these Lisa Eldridge shades, I prefer the lighter ones. With the darker, for instance, with Jazz, I had to use, and this is uh, something that for some reason, I don't know why, but I'm the only one I've ever heard saying this. I love a nice, dense eyeshadow pencil brush to help with lip lines and such, because I think... Lipstick br brushes can be flimsy and too long. I like this, it washes out easily. This, as you see, is all dirty from Jazz. When I put on the darker shades, I can see lip lines when I smile and I need to go in and fix stuff and it takes me a while. For some of you who are like me that like to get out the door, that's a negative. Others say, I wear red lipstick all the time and I don't mind taking time with my lip color. Okay, depends on your priorities, whether that's a negative or a non-issue. The darker shades are gonna take you a little bit more time and be a little bit more fussy. A good though is that you can wear this indeed as a stain or as a full on lip or anywhere in between. I suppose we could say that about any liquid lip or any lipstick in general. 
it stays on. Let me show you. Here's a picture of me five hours in and I had eaten. This is Jazz. This is from the other day. Here is me wearing Jazz about five hours in as a stain. I had eaten. Um, I had had a soda. A little bit, a little bit with the darker shades again will get into the lip lines if you're not careful. Um, and I think that is an issue with a lot of liquid lips and a lot of lip stains, especially as we go darker. There's another vote in my box for the lighter shades. I prefer the lighter shades here. And the darker shades, again, are going to take a little bit of time to get on. Um, Lisa Eldridge herself says that you will need something to remove it, like, you know, um, some sort of a makeup remover. We heard Huda Beauty say that uh, with the Huda stains as well. I actually found that a lot of these Lisa Eldridge stains remove fairly easily with water. And a lot of you will be horrified and think that's a negative. I don't see it as a negative. Uh, I definitely had to scrub, but I didn't have to use anything that felt toxic or drying or awful on my lips. So I'm actually putting that in the positive category. I felt these are easier to get off than a lot of the competition and I actually kind of appreciated that. I did not have to scrub or damage my lips to get this off. It makes it perhaps not as long wearing as others, but um, I did like that. The main points are that once this is on, I think it's beautiful, it's saturating and lovely. It really presents beautifully on the lips. That's the main positive. The main negative for me is that it feels like a very traditional liquid lip to me and I do like it to feel a bit softer and more nurturing on the lip but that doesn't mean it's drying. Let's be careful of these kind of superlatives in either direction if you know what I mean. So it is a beautiful liquid lip. A little bit more care is needed to put on. I definitely prefer the lighter shades. It wears well, but comes off easily. It depends on what you require in a liquid lip. You could take it from there. I will answer any of your questions below. Um, let's talk about this. How many of you purchased it? What shades did you get? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? I am not here just to get on a soapbox and scream at everybody and leave. We are a community. Your opinion matters. So tell me it below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I sure hope that you did. Hey, if you haven't already done so, I would love for you to subscribe to this channel. YouTube recommends videos you've seen already, but when you actually hit subscri subscribe, it helps me grow my channel and I certainly love your help and I love your faith in me and my reviews. I appreciate it very much. Come on over and say a big hello over on Instagram, TikTok, and now on threads. And don't forget you can become a bigger member of this community by becoming a channel member for behind the scenes and weekly members only lives. Or you can even give super thanks, but it's true that in any way that you decide to spend your time here with me, I am very grateful and I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Bye-bye.